Well, sweat, skill, and steely determination, these are all vital ingredients at a soccer match. But there's another factor that plays into the game, science. So if you are an aspiring star on the pitch and you want to bend it like Beckham, you just might want to listen to what our next guest has to say. Edward Willett is a science writer. We spoke to him from Regina. What kind of science is behind the game of soccer? I'd say uh, the number one one is obviously physics. Uh, you've got uh, objects in motion, both people and the ball, and uh, that sort of defines physics in a lot of ways and the way that they interact with each other. Besides physics, any other kind of science involved here? Well, there's a bit of uh, human physiology and all that sort of thing playing into it as well, of course, and uh, how well the players are in shape and how they move their bodies in order to contact the ball and to move down the field. So certainly uh, physiology figures into it as well. Okay, let's talk about the ball. I know that's probably one of the main components of physics we're talking about here. How does the design of the ball affect the game? Well, the ball that they're using is called the Teamgeist. Uh, it was uh, made by Adidas and introduced, I believe, at last year's World Cup. And it's quite different from the ball I'm holding here. <laughs> well, for one thing, uh, the ball I'm holding here is an old beat-up ball that I got from my six-year-old daughter's soccer league. But uh, it has 32 panels, the old ball, like I'm holding. And the current Teamgeist ball has 14 panels. And they're arranged in such a way that the surface is much smoother. And that affects the physics a couple of ways. Uh, when a ball is going through the air and spinning like this, like this would be better. On one side, into the direction of flight, the air is moving faster because it's the same way that the ball is spinning. On the other side, the air is moving slower. So as it's spinning around, the uh, side that has faster moving air also has less air pressure. More air pressure on the side that's uh, got the higher, uh, the spinning into the direction of travel. And as a result, it tend, the ball tends to get pushed. And that's how they make the ball curve. Uh, with the fewer panels, you have a smoother surface, and that's all more uh, reliable and more, uh, more accurate for the players. Uh, one of the interesting things about that is that when you kick it really fast, there's turbulence, and that makes the ball not curve as much in the early part of its flight. The turbulence actually means that it's less affected by the, the drag on the one side and, and not pushed over as much. At some point in the flight of the ball, uh, that turbulence drops away. You get a smoother uh, airflow. And at that point, you'll get a much bigger curve. And that's how you see these amazing shots where they'll kick it and it goes straight. And it just it seems like at the last minute, it suddenly curves and goes into the net, or hopefully, anyway. And the new ball, the new ball uh, makes all of that happen a little differently. So it's taken them uh, some time to get used to. What about the kick? Uh, how does the science work there? Is it your leg? Is it your foot? Is it where you connect with the ball? How does the kick affect how the ball travels? Well, there's, um, it's where you kick the ball, basically. Uh, if they kick it straight into the middle of the ball, right at the center of gravity. The ball goes straight, not much spin. And there are players that specialize in that. If the ball doesn't spin, uh, then everything I was just talking about kind of goes out the window. And instead, the seams on the ball catch the air in various ways, depending on the way that the air is moving around. It's like a knuckleball in baseball, and it'll, it'll wobble all over the place. It's very unpredictable, very hard to tell what it's going to do. If they want it to spin, then they, they kick it uh, off center. Uh, there's kind of a sweet spot. If you kick it too far off center, you don't get much spin. If you kick it right in the middle, you don't get much spin. Hit it in the right place, you can put whatever kind of spin you, you want to put on it. And of course, also how high on the ball you hit depend, uh, defines how the ball is going to move. If you hit it underneath, uh, it'll go up. If you hit it on top, it'll roll along. If you hit it right in the middle, it'll kind of scoot along. And then when friction takes over, it'll start to roll. So there's a lot of things going into every kick. And then what about when you head the ball? <laughs> well, then you're dealing basically with a bouncing ball and, and the transfer of energy. Uh, the ball comes in. It's got all this kinetic energy that was given by the kick. When it hits, it deforms, presses against whatever it's hit. If that's your head, uh, then it's imparting uh, kinetic energy to your head. And uh, once it's deformed, the air inside it and the substance that the ball is made of uh, both snap back the ball goes flying off again. In the meantime, a little bit of energy has come from the movement of the player, of course, and so the ball may pick up some speed. But there is a, a transfer of energy in the head as well, because the brain uh, kind of sloshes up against the head when it comes to a sudden contact with the ball. And that's why uh, they don't actually recommend heading for young players anymore. Uh, it can be very, uh, very bad for young players. But uh, they say for uh, professional players, older players, like the ones in the tournament now, that it, it's, uh, it's safe. The, uh, the impact is there, but it's uh, not considered dangerous if it's done properly. 
Okay, that's good because there's a lot of glory yeah. in heading the ball. <laughs> what about uh, engineering, the design of the stadium, the turf and all of that? How does science work in, in that regard? Uh, yes, uh, the turf makes a huge difference and uh, FIFA has some very uh, strict regulations for artificial turf and it, uh, they measure a lot of things. But just to give you an example, if the surface is soft, then the players will feel like their footing isn't as even and they'll tend not to run as fast. Also, they're losing more energy into that soft surface. On the other hand, if it's hard, they're more likely to get injured because, again, you have that transfer of energy between uh, their body and the, uh, the playing surface and you're putting more impact onto joints and so forth. Uh, they, how well it, uh, the friction between the player and the surface makes a difference, so how well they can suddenly make turns and go in different directions. Um, there are things, um, how well the ball will bounce off of it, the angle that the ball will bounce off of it. Uh, all these things vary from stadium to stadium depending on how the surface is, uh, what kind of surface they put in. And that means that for every different stadium a team goes into, uh, they have to figure out how it's going to react and get a feel for it uh, in order to make the uh, best game that they can play. Well, Edward, thank you so much for explaining that to us. You're welcome.